Chapter 92, Killing and Displaying a Show of Force. Throw down your weapons and leave. You will be spared from death. Those stubborn in their negativity and defiance will die. Fatty Zhuan called out loudly on the back of the gold-winged swordbird. He also knew that he was a green leaf, a green leaf that was there to set off the big red flower that was Zhang Chen. Except, this moment and this scene let Fatty Zhuan clearly know that even if he was a green leaf, he was sure to become a legendary green leaf from today onwards in the Eastern Kingdom. Those vassals who were not directly related to the Duke of Soaring Dragon had already lost their fighting spirit and had all thrown their weapons down. Those troops directly under the Duke of Soaring Dragon's control also became headless flies in this situation where Long Yunai was dead, and Long Yi was gravely injured. They all looked at each other, at a loss for what to do. At this moment, a captain with one eye leapt forward. The Duke has nurtured his soldiers all for today's battle. How many can Zhang Chen kill with that bow and arrow of his? Chin up if you're a good son of the Long family. Rush in and kill Zhang Feng. Wipe out the Zhang family. Ah. An arrow as swift as lightning had already pierced through his throat after he finished speaking. Who else is there? Zhang Chen's voice was remote. There was already another arrow on his bow as if he had performed a magic trick. He had looted this bow from Zhu Sha, and there actually weren't that many arrows within the quiver, only twenty or thirty. That attack on Long Yi and Long Yin I just now had used three. There were still roughly twenty or so arrows, yet Zhang Chen wasn't worried about a thing. He'd shoot whoever popped out. Although there would be a few amongst these people who were unafraid of death, not everyone would be willing to seek one's doom in the face of absolute power, when they knew that death was certain. As long as he killed those that poked their head out, and made an example of them, he was sure to be able to destroy their fighting spirit. There's me and die, whoosh, whoosh. Two more arrowheads once again found their way unerringly into the throats of these two captains. Upon seeing that there were those who still hadn't given up hope, Fatty Zhuan called out, Long Yunai is already dead, and your master is gone, is it really worth it to waste your life like this? These words had a devastating impact. Indeed, Long Yunai was dead. Who were they working themselves to the bone for? Princess Gu waved her long sword and admonished, You have been sent out without righteous cause, and acted without justification. The death of Long Yunai and the grievous injuries of Long Yi are proof. Why haven't you retreated? When the Tandu army arrives, all of you will be dead without a complete corpse. Princess Gi represented the royal family. Her words were the straw that broke the camel's back, finally making the Long family's fierce, elite soldiers waver with uncertainty. Someone threw down his weapon. Where there was one, there would be two. Swathes of soldiers threw down their weapons afterwards. The people's courage was gone as fast as the receding tide water. In the span of a moment, the great 30,000 strong army that had gathered in front of the Zhang Han manor doors had completely scattered. There were only the corpses of Long Yunai and a few captains present, along with Long Yi crouched on the ground, his status unknown. Zhang Chen was a cautious person. He shot out another arrow that penetrated Long Yi's skull, nailing him firmly to the ground. It was only then that he descended from the clouds. At this moment, a din of cheers sounded from within the Zhang Han manor. Too amazing. This change was too unexpected. They were already prepared to fall in battle, and had formed a resolution in the face of certain death. Who would have thought that such a change would occur so suddenly? There was nothing left of the 30,000 strong army that had been like a pack of wolves or tigers. And they, a thousand strong, hadn't even had a chance to get their hands dirty. The descent of this divine weapon seemed like aid gifted from the gods. Those of the Zhang family all looked at Zhang Chen as if exalting a saint. Those eight personal guards of his were also moved beyond belief. This was their master, the one they were following. These scenes just now had caused their blood to thrum and boil. Admiration, worship. These words were insufficient to express the depths of their current emotions. They only knew that even the position of first duke within this kingdom was likely not worthy of becoming this master's goal, Chenner. Although Zhang Feng was experienced and steady, he too also slightly lost his composure in this moment. His large hand grasped Zhang Chen as tears swam in his fierce eyes. He was overjoyed, overjoyed that his son had returned safely. He was proud, proud that his son had turned the raging tide. Fatty Zhuan hopped down from the back of a gold wing sword and made a beeline to Long Yunai's corpse, giving it a few vicious kicks. Aren't you awesome? Don't you walk over everything? Isn't it the ones who adhere to you that ascend, and those that defy you who die? Why don't you show me how awesome you are now? Fatty Zhuan had received more than his fair share of bullying from the upper echelons of the noble heirs during ordinary times in the capital. This Long Yunai was the representative figure of those elite heirs. This person was domineeringly tyrannical. His many evil deeds were too numerous to inscribe on all available bamboo strips. That was why Fatty Zhuan had forgotten himself and his actions. He'd vented quite a bit of ill will. After kicking him for a few times, Fatty Zhuan drew out his waist knife and chopped off Long Yunai's head. He then walked towards Long Yi, and imitated his previous actions. Holding the two heads, Fatty Zhuan called out, Brother Chen, I'm making a trip to the Soaring Dragon Manor. One could tell that Fatty Zhuan's grudge against Soaring Dragon went uncommonly deep. This was putting on a show of force at the first possible chance. Zhang Chen caught over a gold wing sword and murmured to it a few reminders in the beast language. He patted Fatty Zhuan's shoulder. You can go, but don't linger. Strong practitioners abound at the Soaring Dragon Manor. Don't trap yourself in there. Fatty Zhuan smirked. Brother Chen, you know I'm most afraid of death. I promise that I'll never descend to within firing range of their bows and arrows. Will it work? The act of killing someone and then displaying their head was already a bit over the top. But, compared to what the Duke of Soaring Dragon had done to the Zhang family, this wasn't even worth mentioning. The two sides were in a blood feud by now, and wouldn't rest until one side was dead. Zhang Chen naturally had no further reservations. He would counterattack the Duke of Soaring Dragon, 
using whatever means necessary. Zhang Chen firmly believed that if he hadn't made it back in time, the downfall of his clan members would be even more worse off. Long Yunai was sure to be ten times crueler than himself. With Long Yunai's brutal and bloodthirsty personality, he was sure to invent even more ruthless tricks in order to terrorize the other dukes. Having been born into a royal household, Princess Gu was accustomed to these sort of happenings. She felt that there was nothing untoward about Long Yunai's head being cut off. Zhang Chen, I knew that you would come back. Princess Gu walked up. Zhang Chen looked at Princess Gu and sighed lightly, Your Highness, I, Zhang Chen, owe you for today's grace of a helping hand. I will be sure to return this favor to you. Don't talk like this Zhang Chen. I came for my own peace of mind, not that I was counting on your return. Besides, I, Zhang Chen spread out his hands, this is my personal principle. Princess Gu wasn't happy to see Zhang Chen like this. Her heart rather sank instead. She knew that the relationship between Zhang Chen and her royal brother had broken apart at last. Zhang Chen made no mention of the king, and had only said that he owed her, Princess Gu, a favor. What did this mean? This meant that Zhang Chen had no more illusions about her royal brother, Eastern Lu. I, Princess Gu sighed in resignation, her emotions exceedingly complex. Zhang Chen's miraculous appearance today, and his unparalleled performance, had completely upended her understanding. Even Long Yi, an eleven meridians true Qi master, had been unable to contend with Zhang Chen's heavenly shot. Just how strong was Zhang Chen? To be honest, after Zhang Chen had eaten the rare jade fruit in the boundless catacomb and had broken through, he'd successfully ascended to ten meridians true Qi and joined the ranks of true Qi masters. Even in a direct confrontation, he'd have the ability to battle an eleven meridians true Qi master. Not to mention that he was using Zhu Sha's treasured bow and his heavenly arrows, further adding to his power. Add to that his advantageous position from above, his wizardry with the bow and arrow, and that he had caught the others off guard. Besides, the diving force of the Goldwing Swordbird had also unconsciously made things easier for Zhang Chen. It had led to an increase in supporting power, perfecting the force from his arrow. And, Long Yi had more or less had a self-sacrificial mindset in saving Long Yunai. If he hadn't paid heed to Long Yunai, and only been concerned about his own escape, he would have been entirely able to escape, since Zhang Chen's first arrow hadn't been aimed at him. The pity was that he was Long Yi, a loyal servant of Soaring Dragon. He had paid the price himself as well in trying to save his master. An army of 30,000 strong had scattered like birds and animals. All of them fled frantically back to the Soaring Dragon Manor. However, as fast as their feet were, they were unable to measure up to Fatty Zhuan's Goldwing Swordbird. Whilst these deserters were halfway through their trek, Fatty Zhuan had already arrived in the air above the Soaring Dragon Manor. Fatty Zhuan was a somewhat silly person. He gave no thought to his old man's stance, as he hovered in midair, calling out loudly, Long Zhufeng, come out. This sudden yell caused an uproar around the Duke of Soaring Dragon within a radius of several kilometers. Who was this? They were much too bold, and actually dared to say the Duke of Soaring Dragon's name? Was he courting death? Duke Long's right eyelid kept jumping. It was as if thunder had struck out of nowhere when he heard this abrupt yell, and his entire being spasmed. Who is it? Some of the strong practitioners loyal to Duke Long had long since rushed to the roof. Who the hell are you to dare come and act wildly at a Soaring Dragon manor? These Soaring Dragon practitioners only felt that it was rather odd to see someone riding a bird up in the clouds. They felt that an expert from one of the hidden sects had graciously arrived, as all of them tilted their heads back as if confronting a formidable enemy. Act wildly. I'm here to give you a present. Tell Long Zhufeng to come out. Fatty Zhuan felt really damn good inside. What was this? This was him becoming a new person. To think that he, Fatty Zhuan, someone who had always been the target of bullying in the capital, could directly voice Duke Long's name today. What was properly standing up with his head held high? What was the peak of a life? Nothing would surpass this moment today. Long Zhufeng heard clearly, and he too vaulted up to the roof, standing in a high place, and threw his head back to ask, Who might you be, and what gift do you bring? Fatty Zhuan was a slippery fellow as he hid in the far reaches, not showing his face. His head was crouched down on the back of the Goldwing Swordbird, presenting an exceedingly bizarre appearance. What gift? I ask you, where is your son Long Yunai? Where is Long Yi? Long Zhufen started, not comprehending but responding. Long Yi has accompanied my son Yunai on an outing to resolve some personal matters. I anticipate that they will return shortly. Who might you be? Are you a friend of my son Yunai? Seeing that since this person rode a Goldwing Swordbird, he likely had a powerful background. Given this, Long Zhufen restrained his tone and even injected a few traces of joviality. Ha ha, resolving some personal matter, is it? They'll return shortly. Fatty Zhuan smiled as he spoke. Yes. You're wrong. They've already returned. Take this. Fatty Zhuan threw down the package and it fell through a great distance. The momentum behind a throw from such a high vantage point was quite strong, and Duke Long didn't dare underestimate it. He struck a firm horse stance and encircled it with his hands, catching it firmly after making a few circles. Long Zhufen was completely befuddled. He was perplexed by the other's words of, They've already returned. Take this, and had a vague terror-raising feeling. 